Bismillahi walhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. This is a message from everyone here at Qalam to all of our brothers and sisters who are working in healthcare, particularly are serving on the front lines during this pandemic. We spoke earlier today and wanted to communicate some thoughts, some very humble advice, and some useful information that we felt could be of use to our brothers and sisters while they're serving and taking care of all the sick people while this pandemic rages on. I wanted to first and foremost talk about from an inspirational and spiritual point of view that serving in this kind of a situation the medical needs of people, whether they be doctors or nurses or hospital workers, people that are serving sick people and are helping people in their most desperate times of need. I wanted to share from a spiritual point of view how that's viewed in Islam. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us, Wallahu fi awni abdi ma kana abdu fi awni akhihi that God continues to remain in the assistance of his slave so long as the slave remains in the assistance of his brother or sister. The Prophet of Allah وسلم, was asked once, Ya Rasulullah, Ayyun nasi ahabbu ilallah? O Messenger of God, which of the people is most beloved to Allah? The Prophet of Allah وسلم, responded, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِلنَّاسِ The most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amongst the people are the people that are most beneficial and helpful to other people. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he taught us إِنَّ عِذَمَ الْجَزَاءِ مَا عِذَمِ الْبَلَاءِ that the magnitude of a person's reward is commensurate and corresponding to the magnitude of a person's test and trial. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا حَبَّ قَوْمًا إِبْتَلَاهُمْ When Allah wants good for a people, He will put them sometimes in test and trial so that they may shine in those moments of difficulty and adversity. Specifically, the job that is being done by all of you, the Prophet wasallam says, in a beautiful hadith, مَنْ عَادَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ زَارًا أَخَنْ لَهُ فِي اللَّهِ That when someone goes and visits someone who is sick or ill, or visits their Muslim brother or sister, and right now the people that are sick and ill, nobody has the ability to visit them. And the, the healthcare professionals are the only ones checking in on them. نَادَاهُمْ مُنَادٍ It is called out to, uh, someone calls out to that person. The angel makes a proclamation. أَنْ طِبْتَ وَطَابَ مَمْشَاكَ وَتَبَوَّأْتَ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ مَنْزِلًا That you have done good. And your footsteps, may they be blessed. And you have secured your home in paradise. You have secured your home in paradise. So during this very difficult ordeal, while you do this very difficult job, I wanted to very humbly remind you and encourage you that you are serving the needs of others. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as we take care of others, Allah will take care of us. You have to believe in that. You have to know that. At the same time, during these kinds of moments, we are particularly reminded of all the tools, the spiritual tools and resources that the Prophet ﷺ taught us that we can utilize in order to protect ourselves. When you leave your home, Bismillahi tabakaltu ala Allah. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. That put your faith and trust in God. That there is no power nor might except with Allah. When you are, when you are setting out to go to your work, reciting the du'as, the supplications that provide divine protection, Bismillahi. لَا يَضُرُّ مَا عَسْمِهِ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ That with the name of God, that with His name, there's nothing that can harm me in the heavens nor in the earth. At the same time, 
I wanted to provide some information that might be beneficial or helpful or relevant. I have had many healthcare and medical professionals who have reached out in regards to different situations that, that they're dealing with in being in that environment and dealing with, you know, patients and people that are affected by the virus. I received a question about, you know, if someone is praying during their break and they wash their hands and the water is clean, but it's very stressful being in that environment. And if they have a reluctance or a hesitation to putting water in their mouth with their hand and in their nose until they're not able to get home and just completely scrub themselves down, is that acceptable when making wudu? The majority of the scholars stipulate that the rinsing of the mouth and the putting the water in the nose, al madmada wal istinshaq, is not something that is a mandatory, required part of the wudu. So someone could potentially skip those steps, and their wudu will still be acceptable and be complete, and they could pray in that kind of a situation. When you are dealing with the stress and the onslaught of the circumstances in the emergency room or in the hospital or in the intensive care unit or wherever it may be, then remember the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala bi dhikri Allahi tatma'inna al-qulub. Saying a quick bismillah walhamdulillah la ilaha illallah Allahu Akbar can bring you a lot of peace and tranquility and comfort. If you have the ability to recite some of the Qur'an that you have memorized, even a small surah, even a little verse here or there, ayatul kursi, read something from the Qur'an, whatever you know. Tanazzalat lil Qur'an, like the hadith of the Prophet tanazzalat lil Qur'an. Peace and tranquility comes when you read the Qur'an. At the same time, I also wanted to address the families of many of these same healthcare professionals who are equally dealing with a stressful situation, where they're worried about their loved ones going into this environment. And they're also concerned about if they come back home, could the whole family, God forbid, get sick and whatnot. Remember the hadith of the Prophet wasallam that tells us someone who removes even a small burden from someone in the life of this world, someone who alleviates or tries to, tries to, sa'a fi hajjah, right? Even tries to alleviate some difficulty and adversity from someone who is suffering and struggling in the life of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove from them the adversity and the struggle of the Day of Judgment, which will be greater than any struggle that anyone has ever seen or witnessed. So be strong and be supportive and be encouraging to your loved ones and to your family members, which I know is not easy knowing that they're going into these very dangerous situations, but support them and encourage them. And this will be a means of not only their forgiveness and the elevating of their status on the Day of Judgment, but it will also be the same for the family, for the families of those people who are also working in these very dire circumstances and situations. Remember that we are all one Ummah, and we are making dua for you, and you remember to make dua for all the rest of us. And with our duas and with our commitment to doing good, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring us out of this difficulty and adversity. Lastly and finally, to maybe lift your spirits, I was reminded about a very beautiful hadith, uh, excuse me, a very beautiful story of a remarkable scholar of hadith. He was a great scholar of hadith, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, rahimahullah ta'ala. And I was reminded about a very beautiful story of his that I thought would be very inspiring for all of us to reflect upon. He was a very wealthy individual, and he used to go for Hajj every year. And when he would travel for Hajj, he would pay for his companions, the people who were with him on Hajj, and he would go every single year for Hajj. One particular year, he set out for Hajj, and he had, all, he had his animal and all of his supplies and all of the money that he had. And he was ready to go for Hajj. And he would give a lot of, you know, charity and sadaqah and feed people at Hajj. So he had a lot of money with him. And while he was on his way, he saw that there was this young girl who was basically, you know, 
taking something from this dead animal, plucking this dead animal. And he said to her, he said, what are you doing? Was that slaughtered properly? Because otherwise, if it's roadkill, it's just found dead like that, it's not permissible. Harimata alaykum al mayta the Qur'an prohibits it. So what are you doing, young lady? And she said, no, it's not, uh, we did not sacrifice it, slaughter it properly. It is carrion, it is mayta, it is dead when I found it. But we are in such a dire situation, my family and I, that eating dead animals off the side of the road and digging, eating out of trash cans became permissible for us days ago. We are at the point of starvation. He said, take me to your home immediately. When he went there and he saw the dire circumstance of that family, he got off of his animal, tied all of his supplies onto the animal, back of the animal, put his money there, and basically gave them the animal with all his supplies and all of his money and just left enough money for him to be able to get back to his home. And he did not go for Hajj that year. The story goes on to say that when his some of his uh, friends and acquaintances, when they came back from Hajj, they were talking about stories of Hajj, and he was listening to these stories, and somebody said, oh yeah, we saw you there, and we saw you there. And he said, I did not go for Hajj. And he later on saw a dream in which he was informed that you made that sacrifice for that family. You put their need in front of your good intention and noble deed of Hajj. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed an angel to do Hajj on your behalf. He was going for an act of worship, such a noble thing. But it was something that he was doing naflan, tatawwan. Hajj was not fard on him. He was doing it as a, as an uh, uh, an additional hajj. But he sacrificed that to, adri to address someone's very, very severe situation and to help somebody in a very desperate time of need. That many people are sacrificing maybe their well-being, their comfort, their potential safety, and peace of mind by just staying home to help people in their time of need. And so maybe, inshallah, that inspires you and motivates you and gives you the strength and the courage and the himmah to keep doing what you're doing. Remember to put your faith and trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and remember to continue to make dua and remember to stay connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all throughout this ordeal. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide protection. I hope this was a source of nasiha and encouragement and advice for our brothers and sisters. On behalf of everyone at Qalam, Jazakumullah khairan, Barakallah fikum. May Allah protect you. May Allah protect all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect everyone worldwide. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviate this difficulty. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.